Hello and welcome. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use voice controls for sim racing. And the example we're going to use is an application called Voice Attack, available from voiceattack.com. I was trying to think about when I first heard about Voice Attack and I think it was in relation to either Star Citizen or Elite Dangerous, one of those space sims. And of course you could use it for flight sims of course as well or indeed any application I guess even for macros for Word or Excel or something like that anyway voice attack is available to try for free and then once you've decided to keep the application you can purchase a copy for $10 I should note that the application is also available through Steam although through Steam you may pay a bit more so I would recommend just buying a copy from the developers website and indeed that's what I did once you have voice attack installed, one of the first things you'll want to do is set it to use administration rights when running. This is necessary to allow the application to correctly access various aspects of your PC. Simplest way to do this is to go to the installation directory, in this case C program files x86 and voice attack. And then you locate the executable, right click on it, select properties, Open the compatibility tab and then choose run this program as administrator and click apply. Also for example in Windows 10 one of the things you could do is right click again on the executable and select pin to taskbar. And that will place an application launch icon in your taskbar which you could for example place beside Steam if you happen to have Steam there as well. So if you want to boot up a sim racing session and you're going to use voice attack you could start steam and then start voice attack at the same time which is in a way an easy way to remember to run it because I tend to forget to run all the applications I tend to use when I'm sim racing. So we'll now run voice attack and as you can see this is the prompt to run the application in administration mode so I just click yes. Now one of the things you should do on a regular basis is check for updates. Naturally of course if you've just downloaded and installed it it's the latest version but to check for updates you click on the spanner icon to access the settings section. Go to the general tab and click check for updates and as you can see here I currently have the latest version. If there was an update available you would be sent here and you would click on this floppy disk icon to download the latest version of the application and install it. When using voice attack on a regular basis one of the most important aspects is the use of your microphone which of course allows the application to correctly interpret your voice commands. This can get somewhat complicated but all you need to do really is decide which microphone you want to use and set voice attack to use that microphone. In this example I have several microphones connected to the PC. So from the desktop I'll right click to access the sound settings and click on the recording tab and as you can see here I have several microphone solutions. Here I have a microphone connected to a headset, I have a standard microphone that's on a mic arm or boom and I also have some virtual inputs. In this case I'm going to select the desk microphone so what I'll do is I'll go back to uh, voice attack, click on the spanner icon, go to the audio settings, look for the microphone I want to use and for example click change now. And then if I wanted to change to the microphone that's connected to the headset I would look for that one and click change now. And notice as well that voice attack will allow you to set that microphone as the default when booting windows and to do that tick this option and click OK. Another option to be aware of when using voice attack is the use of any form of audio gate. In this example I'm using this voice meter application and I use this audio gate facility to reduce the possibility of background noise. However this can be an issue when using voice attack. So if you use any kind of audio gate, you may need to either turn it off completely or reduce it. So in this case, if I use the audio gate to about 0 0.5 or 0 0.6, it tends to function still okay, but still allowing me to have some form of audio gate in place. 
The next option you should check before you start using voice attack on a regular basis is to correctly set up the speech recognition system included with Windows. You can access this system directly from voice attack itself. Click again on the spanner icon to access the settings and then access the recognition tab and over on the right from utilities click on microphone setup to begin. We we'll select the microphone type we're going to use and then click on next. You then go through the instructions for setting up your microphone and then you must read out the sentence shown on screen. Peter dictates to his computer. He prefers it to typing and particularly prefers it to pen and paper. Then click next when you're ready. Then click finish. And then you should continue by completing the speech recognition system training. Click on utilities again and select speech engine training. And once you click next, you will have to read aloud the text that appears on screen and read out each line into your microphone until the process has been completed. So what I'll do is click next. I am now speaking to my computer. The computer is learning the sound of my voice as I speak. This will help the computer recognize what I say better. One hour later. This concludes the speech recognition background information training session. To learn more about speech recognition, look in the help documentation for speech. And then once you're done, you can click on more training or simply click next. And also if you want, you can share the speech data with Microsoft. In this case, I'll click send. And once you're done with those two features, you can click on OK. As you can see, I already have some profiles created for the driving sims I'm currently playing, such as R Factor 2, Assetto Corsa, Automobilista and Race Room. Before I continue with showing you how to set up a profile for a driving sim, one option you should check is the target. This took me quite a while to figure out, and what I found I was doing was selecting the application from the current list of applications currently running. But I found then the simplest thing to do was just select active window. So for example, when I'm playing R Factor 2, and R Factor 2 is currently the active window in this screen, then voice attack becomes active. So just set it to active window and leave it there. Of course, each driving sim you play has its own way of implementing controls. But how you implement those controls for voice controls for voice attack is the same for every game you play. In this example, we're going to use Assetto Corsa. So here I have a profile made for Assetto Corsa and clicking on the edit profile option, you can see the list of commands I've already created for the game. And on the left here, I have the Assetto Corsa launcher open with the list of commands available. Some commands are based on shortcuts, for example, like the mirror command in Assetto Corsa is F11. And some are based on commands that I've entered myself such as, for example, the letter D for DRS or the letter K for curves. And these commands here, such as restart and start and teleport, are based on this mod, which is the is as short key mod, which I've added to a set of courses. And if I open the race department page, which contains the information about the mod, you can see that these are the predefined controls. And when the mod is running, I can use these voice commands inside voice attack. So as you can see the setup will differ for every game but the use inside voice attack is the same. As an example I'll show you how to add and remove a voice control command. Here for example I have the spoken word mirror assigned to the F11 key to show and hide the virtual mirror inside a set of Corsa. I'll delete this command and I'll select new command and I'll type in the word mirror I'll select key press and I'll type F11 and then click OK and then click OK and as you can see mirror has been added and another example can be turning on and off lights and in this case I use the spoken word lights which presses the L key to turn the lights on and off and for example I can use the spoken word lights for lights in R Factor 2 in race room and so on. And once I'm done making any changes to my profile, I click apply and click done. 
As I noted earlier, I currently have four profiles in use. This is the profile for Automobilista with the associated commands. This is the profile for Race Room. And this is the profile for R Factor 2. And as you can see in R Factor 2, I'm also using the spoken word mirror to flip through the mirror options, which in this case is assigned to number three. And I can use lights which is assigned to letter Y for turning the headlights on and off. And I should also note that you can sort the commands alphabetically by clicking on the top of the spoken command column. And note that, for example, you can also edit a command. So if, for example, I want to assign another key to this command, I would select the command, click on edit, select the command I've already entered, delete, select key press again, and then input the letter I want to use and click OK. So it's quite simple. And I tend to add, remove and edit commands on the fly. But what I do is I always make sure that I keep the spoken words the same. Otherwise, I'd have no way of remembering what the commands are. And finally, a quick note on how to back up your voice attack settings. Once you've gone through the process of setting up voice attack profiles for multiple games to access your settings, Click on the spanner icon again, click on system advanced and select click here to browse voice attacks data folder. And here, for example, in my user data folder under app data roaming voice attack is the voice attack dot that file. And in that file is stored all the settings I've added to voice attack. So it's probably a good idea to keep a backup of this file just in case. OK, so at this point, I'll quickly demo playing some driving sims using voice controls through voice attack. Like I mentioned earlier, I have my Steam shortcut here on the taskbar. Many will ask, why don't you just leave Steam running when Windows boots, but I don't usually tend to do that, but anyway. And I placed the voice attack shortcut also here, which is a reminder to put it on. So I click yes to run the application in administration mode. And usually what I do before booting the game is make sure that voice attack is actually working. So what I'll do is I'll select the profile for the game I'm going to play. I'm going to start with R Factor 2 and I'll just check some quick voice commands. 1, 2, 1, 2, mirror, pit controls, pit controls. Depending on the type of microphone you're using and the distance the microphone is from your face, you may have to speak louder or clearer. In this case, I wanted to record some audio for the purposes of making a video. But if you're not planning to record or anything like that, it's probably simpler to just use a microphone that's connected to a headset where the microphone can be right in front of your face and it's easier for the application to detect the incoming voice commands. So I'll begin by launching R Factor 2. Okay, so we're now in R Factor 2. And before I begin, I'm going to make sure that voice attack is set up correctly. So I'll quickly just alt tab out to voice attack. I have my R Factor 2 profile selected. I have the target as active window, like I mentioned earlier. And here are my list of commands. It might be an idea if you're playing several games to write some of the key commands down because it may be difficult to remember them all. Of course, there are commands which are common to most like mirror, lights, start, pause, that kind of thing, but some do differ. So each to his own, but these are the commands I'm using for R Factor 2 anyway. So I know that this is set up correctly. So I click done. I go back to the game, enter. Ignition, ignition, starter, mirror, 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 limiter.
So those are the common commands you use. And of course, like I said, some titles have specific commands. Some have hybrid controls and some don't. But it might be an idea, like I said, to write them down. Or once you get used to using them, often it'll be easy to remember, of course. Drivers. That turns the driving names on and off. Drivers. For example. Now we move on to the next title. So I'm now in Assetto Corsa and before I start, I'll Alt tab out, go to voice attack, choose the correct profile. And these are the voice commands I've configured for Assetto Corsa, which include commands added via a mod, like I mentioned earlier. Start, center, and in this example, I can use the spoken word display to switch between the various virtual desktops included with a set of Corsa. Display, 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 hide. And if I want to, I can also completely hide the HUD. Hide, hide, which is kind of handy. Mirror. Mirror, you get the idea. Lights, lights, and so on. Pause. And as a final example, we'll try Automobilista. So here we are in game, and again, we'll Alt tab out to voice attack. Make sure we're using the correct profile. And these are the commands we're using for Automobilista. Make sure the target is active window. Deep breath, nice and easy, you've got this. Ignition. Start. Center. Map, 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 map. Pit display, pit display, pit. Auto pit. So as you can see, there's lots you can do with voice commands. Indeed, the possibilities are probably endless. And the only thing you'll have to, <laughs> all the only thing you'll have a problem with is trying to remember each command. But I guess the simplest no, no, no. thing is trying to make them consistent across various titles. But it's a start. And indeed, I find it useful definitely for offline racing and so on. And the final thing I'll do is I'll show the profiles for the various games. So this is a set of Corsa. So you may, for example, want to pause the screen and have a look at the commands I've configured. This is Automobilista that we've just looked at. And again, like I said, you can sort the commands by alphabetical order. race room and of course R factor 2 and you can save commands import commands export commands and so on so that's also useful possibilities of course are endless like I said so I hope that helps somebody and if you have any comments or questions please leave them in the comment section below the video. Until next time, thank you.